Shares in Stingray, the music giant, are higher today. The company beat expectations in its latest quarter. This is a huge Canadian distributor of audio and video music. Um, it brought in more than $100 million in dollars in quarterly revenue for the first time, driven by an uptick in ad sales. We're joined now by Eric Boyko, president and co-founder and CEO of Stingray. Eric, it's great to see you. Um, I know I ask you this every time, but just tell us briefly, what is the company's business? How do you make money? Yeah, it's, 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 it, we're um, um, the third largest distributor of music in the world. So after XM Sirius, after our friends at the Spotify, we're the third largest distributor, but we sell B2B. So we sell to Samsung, we sell to Tesla, we sell to Bell, we sell to Videotron, we sell. So uh, it's a, and we're, and we're specialized in music, karaoke, calm radio, and also trivia. So very unique model of uh, distribution. So if I'm walking, for example, in a Loblaw store, I, I, I may well be hearing music uh, supplied by Stingray? Yeah, we also, uh, that's a commercial business. We supply music in the, what we call the good old uh, elevator music that everybody finds boring. Uh, we make money with it, and we're in 120,000 retailers across Canada and the US. I guess they love that. They don't have to worry about rights and all that stuff. And the most important is uh, the curation to make sure that there's no um, bad songs or bad okay. wording. Uh, like uh, taking, a bill, take, taking a pill in Ibiza, it's not a bad sentence, but if you know what it means, it's not a very good song to have in the love loss. We better not dwell on that. Uh, somebody who's younger and hipper will tell me about what that one is. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks very much. Um, so tell us about debt. Now, that, according to Desjardins, Desjardins has a buy, but it says that sometimes when they discuss this, your stock with investors, people talk about debt. So you're bringing down the leverage? As you saw, we, we, we brought down our debt from 3.4 times EBITDA to below three. Uh, and uh, management believes that in the next few quarters will be, uh, will be close to 2.5. So uh, we're in a, no, we generated 32 million of free cash flow this quarter. Uh, so Stingray is lucky to be able to generate a high EBITDA to free cash flow conversion ratio of almost uh, right now 80%. So um, we're, we, we feel that right now our balance sheet is very green and happy and our deleverage is, uh, deleveraging is coming quickly. You would like to supplant Sirius as a music people listen to in cars. You know, it's an interesting model. Uh, Sirius XM, uh, uh, the cost is anywhere from 12 to $25 a month. Uh, we can supply music in cars for 20 to 30 cents. So we're, you know, we're like, you know, we're, we're like 2% of the costs of XM series. I think all the new EV cars and the new manufacturers want to control media. They want to control audio in cars. So it's going to be an interesting uh, future of what the car manufacturers around the world decide to do with audio and video. Um, you are in podcasts, but it's not a huge revenue generator for you. I think, you know, podcast is exciting. I think it's a, a lot of uh, tension, but there's no EBITDA in, in podcast right now. Nobody, you know, we, we, we're the biggest podcast company in Canada. We own a division. But again, it's nice. It's fun. But, you know, uh, what my friends uh, say about me is that what I prefer best about music is EBITDA. And podcasting right now is not, uh, hasn't shown even for the big guys any profitability. Eric, I've got to ask you, how long before we're listening to songs written by artificial intelligence? Maybe we already are. No, that's, okay. that's you know, we're, so we're very much involved in that. A lot of people use our master recording to do AI songs. So we'll make money with our master recordings that we use for karaoke. Uh, but that one's going to be an interesting debate for the future. Uh, I must say it's, uh, we're, we're playing with it, but uh, not sure where that will go. Yeah, I, I, the, the copyright's going to be fascinating with that, isn't it? Who wrote the song? Does the AI get revenue itself? No, and, and that's a good question. So the, we're, the most money in, in the song is, is the composer. So uh, what we call the publishing. Mm -hmm. So who owns the publishing rights is the one who really makes the money long term. Um, so it's going to be very interesting uh, who will be the publisher of those songs. So uh, it's going to be, uh, yeah. 
Oh, oh, but I must say Stingray is very advanced with AI and we're using it. Uh, most of our colleagues are using it. So interesting to see what will happen in the future. What about globalization? Do you, do you think that we're going to be starting to listen to more K-pop, for example, in outside Asia? Or I, I'm hearing Indian tunes sounds reflected in hit music in Canada now. Are we looking at a globalization of music tastes? No, no. We, so we, we launched with our, our partners at Samsung's uh, 20 audio channels on, in the US. Uh, and uh, for sure, the number one channel is Greatest Hits. It's mood jazz, it's spa, easy listening. Uh, and K-pop, uh, because they wanted K-pop, is, is probably one of our smallest channels in the US with less than 2% of, uh, of audience share. So it's, it's the good old 70s, 80s, 90s, <laughs> uh, at least on TV. Doesn't mean that's what they listen on Spotify, but on the TV side, it's a much more... Uh, uh, what we call the easy listening. Oh, I don't know how people listen to Golden Oldies. It drives me crazy. Anyway, I've heard the songs too much, oh, but, you, but that's me. You yeah. Mean, so, you'd be surprised that our number three, the, the top three channels is Spa, is Nature, and Easy Listening. So people come home and they want to relax and they want to put some background music and, yep. and do cooking or whatever. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, I guess that's what we see on our, on our model. Yeah, I think the song, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it was I Took a Pill in Ibiza um, and it was by the, the American singer Mike Posner and I think the drug reference had some people uh, uh, worried. Well, no, every song you got to be careful because you, you, when, if you're a retailer, you can't play any song that has any religious or political or meaning. So one of the things we do is we curate and we um, make sure that every song is approved for uh, mm -hmm. an audience of all ages. Yeah.